So hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Upgrade. I am Amir Dikshit, your trainer for this Python Essentials Bootcamp. Now we will be soon starting our workshop, but before that, I just have a small request from you guys that you should subscribe to our channel Let's Upgrade because we plan such events ev on everyday basis. So if you just click on subscribe, then you will be notified um, about all the upcoming events and you will also learn new technologies. Also, apart from that, if you really like our efforts, then don't forget to hit that like button because it really motivates us to provide such free content for you guys. Now, today's session will be a very interesting session where we will be relating many Python scenarios in our real life basis. And also at the end of this session, we will be having a quiz section. On the, and the quiz winners will have some amazing prizes. Like the third prize winner will get a flat 1500 discount on our premium Java and DSA course. The second winner will get a whooping 3000 rupees off on our premium course. And the first winner will get this Java DSA course completely for free. So you guys have to just pay attention for this one hour and it will change your life because today we'll be learning some important concepts in Python. And also by playing the quiz, you can also save your parents money. With that being said, let's start our session. So. Okay. So today we'll be learning about operators and the control statements. Now, first we need to know what is operators. So operators are basically, it is a symbol that is used to perform operation on one or two values or variables. So simple words may bullet though, like addition or subtract subtraction, like five plus 10 or five minus 10. So these all are the operators. Now inside Python, we have different types of operators. So first we'll be learning are the arithmetic operators. Now, arithmetic operators consist of multiplication, addition, subtraction, division. Basically, all you learned in your school life will, can also be performed on the Python as well. So we will let's go back to our compiler. Here, firstly, we will type the operation for the arithmetic operator. So I will just write in the comments, arithmetic operators. And here I will start performing now the operations. To start performing operations first, I will write the print statement. Print. Print. Now I will write the two operands. So if I want to add, let's say two numbers, let's say five plus n. So this will be my arithmetic operation for the addition. When I run this, I will get output as 15. So let's run this and I will get my answer as 15. Now similarly, we can perform some more operations as well, like this abstraction. So I can write 10 minus 5. These are the examples of addition and subtraction in Python. Now here, instead of using the values, we can use variables too. So let's say I have two variables, a equal to 10 and b equal to 5. Now I can also use uh, operators on the base. So I will just write print statement, then my variable that is a into b. So this was the operation for the multiplication. Now I will write print. Now for the division, we will first write the variable name, then this a backslash and b. This stands for division. Let's run our code and check again. And we are getting the output. Firstly, it was the addition that was the 15, then the 5, which was subtraction. Now, here it comes the variable parts where two variables 10 and 5 are multiplied. Just one second. So, here two. So what happened over here is firstly, the value of 10 and five was assigned over here. And then the, uh, it has performed the multiplication operation. And then it was the, for the division. Now here you can see the result is in the float. Yesterday we studied about the float. So what happened in the float is it, these are the data type, which consists of numericals plus the decimal point. And since the division may contain the decimal point, that's why we are getting answer as 2.0, which is the decimal point.
okay so next thing now this is the new concept for you guys so firstly we will be studying about the power operator now you have seen power in our operators in your previous max classes like if we want to calculate a square of a number let's say i want to calculate square of five so what we used to write is we used to write somewhat like this so five raised to two we, we used to write like this five raised to two now inside python we do not write like this because this has a different meaning and in python we need to write print state Five. Now, instead of this sign in Python, we have double asterisk sign. So, this. so what happens here is five is your base. The double stars indicate that is it is a power operator, and two, the two is your the index. So base and the index. So it will be five square. Let's run it out and see whether we are getting twenty five or not. And yes, we are getting twenty five. Now this it was the example was square. If you want. Write example for different index. Let's say I want to calculate cube of the number. So I will simply write three over here. And once I click on run, I am getting output. Uh, can you confirm, guys? Can you guys confirm about my audio right now? Am I audible clearly now? Please uh, kindly respond whether my voice is now breaking or not. Now, okay, okay, yes. Now it's okay. Okay, so we will continue now. So I will repeat for you guys again about the power operator. So we have learned about power operator in our maths class. So what happens is we have base and index concept. So when we write phi square, then phi becomes our base. And the square becomes our index. So in Python, rather than typing like this, we use the double stars. So double stars is used to to indicate that this is the power operation. So here five becomes your base, and three becomes your index. And that's why we are getting now one twenty five as our output, which is basically stands for five cube. Okay. Now the next concept inside the arithmetic will be the floor division. So see what happens here is like I will write nine divided by five. So what happens when I type nine divided by five? It will simply divide nine by the five, and I will I am getting output as one point eight. Now in the floor division, what I will do is I will write same nine, and instead of single slash, I will write double slash and five, and let's see the output. And I am getting only one. So what happens over here is it is just rounding off our value to the nearest decimal point, nearest integer. So when we write nine divided by five, we get answer as one point eight. But floor division is used to round off the operation, and that's why we are getting one as our, our output instead of one point eight. So this is the difference between a normal division and this is the floor division. Let's take an another example to understand this. I will write nineteen. Or let's say seven in by nine. Let's check it out. What happens over here? And I am again getting one as my output because whenever I type seventeen by nine, then I get output with one point something. And let's see, I am getting output as one point eight eight eight. So instead of point eight eight eight, it rounds off to the nearest decimal, nearest integer point. The nearest integer is my one. That's why my answer is one. If you guys have cleared the concept of floor division and the power operator, then do comment yes in the chat box.
okay we will move ahead now so now this is the last concept in the arithmetic operator so what i will write here is print then 17 percent 9 now what this percentage signs is it returns the remainder of our operation i will write over here remainder of the operation so when we divide 17 by 9 we definitely get an remainder because 17 is not perfectly divisible by 9 and that remainder is 8 so once we run the output we will get remainder as well as an output so we are getting 8 as an output because as i said when we divide 17 by 9 then we are getting 8 as our remainder so where this concept of remainder is used it is used to check even numbers in our further part of this lecture we will see how remainder powerful how remainder is powerful but for now you can understand that whenever you use percent that is remainder operation it is used in even and odd numbers as you know that even numbers are perfectly divisible by 2 that means the remainder of those operation is completely zero but for the odd numbers the remainder is always one so for checking whether number is even or odd we use the concept of this operator that is called as remainder operator so percentage is always used to calculate the remainder of our operation and this completes our arithmetic operator the next operator we will be learning are the, the comparison operator so i will just write this to separate my text from the above and now i will start with the comparison operator so what, what this name suggests is it is used to compare something so what it does it takes two operands it takes two values or two variables and it finds out the relation between two of them let's say i have a two variable let's say i equal to 10 and j equal to 15 now i need to check whether i is greater than 10 or i is greater than j or j is greater than i or we can even check whether they both have equal values or not so first we will see whether they both have equal values or not for that i will write print then i now to check whether two variables are equal or not we will use the double equality and then the another variable name that is j now here listen this is the very important part double equal to is always used to check the condition whether i and j have equal values or not for that reason double equal to is are used if we use this single equal to then it is used to assign something whenever like i type j i equal to 10 so this means a single equal to is used to assign this value 10 to the variable i but whenever i use double then it is used to check whether these two well these two variables are having equal values or not so whenever i will run this now these two do not have the equal values so what we will get in the output we will get false as our output and we are getting false so the output of this operation is boolean now what does boolean means boolean means it has only two values either true or false so whenever i run this i would either get a true answer as an answer or a false as an answer now here the condition is not met that is these two numbers are not equal to that's why i am getting false as my answer now there is another operator for this like i exclamation j now what this means firstly this means is the checks for equals and this is checks for the not equals so whenever i run this i the exclamation j then this means that the this checks whether both of these values have different values or not now you see here first we are checking whether two values two variables are having same value or not if value is same it will return true if values are not same it will return false but whenever i write exclamation equal to or not equal to then whenever the values are different then i will get true but whenever the values are same then i will get false so this stands double equal stands for equal to and exclamation equal to stands for not equal to sign so let's run our code we will be ex expecting false and true as our output because firstly the condition here is not met these two values are not equal but whenever i write i not equal to j then the condition is met that's why i am getting true as my answer now to check relation between two i can type print i greater than j so if the value of i is greater than j then it will return true as an output in this case the values are 10 and 15 so i is obviously not greater than j that's so why my output will be false so let's run and check it out and as you can see my output is false but hey j i is less than j so this condition will work i will write print 
i less than g let's run it out and now we are getting true as our model so this is how comparison operators work in python so we can use basically it is used to find out relation between the two values or two variables here i have i and j and here i am checking the well, checking whether these two are equal or not here i am checking whether these two have different values or not here i am checking whether i is greater than j and here i am checking i is less than j also we have i greater than equal to j which means if i has value greater than j like if well, j is 15 then if the value is greater than 15 or if it is 15 then the output will be true as it will be false so this checks for both so that is the values if the values are same then also it returns true and if the value of i is greater than j then also it returns true but in this condition again 10 is less than 15 clearly that's why we will get false as an our output and if we type print i less than equal to j then we will get our correct as as it as it true as an our output so false because i is not greater than and equal to j but true because i is less than or equal to j so this was the concept of the comparison operators now do you have do you guys have any questions on this uh, or are we ready to move on if we are ready to move on to the next operator then please comment yes in the chat box okay we will move on then so next operator we will be learning is the assignment operator so we have been using the assignment operator since long time for example even i equal i equal to 10 so this was the example of the assignment operator whenever we are assigning values to our variables then the operator is called as assignment operator here equal to becomes our assignment operator so when i write x equal to 10 then this is an example of assignment operator where equal to is my operator that belongs to the assignment operator class now you might be wondering what's new in this we have been doing this since last lecture so new concept over here is whenever i type x plus equal to 10 so what will happen over here, here is it will write it will be executed as x equal to x plus 10 so whenever i write x plus equal to 10 then it means x equal to x plus 10 so whenever i run this output what will happen here is firstly the value of x will be assigned so here 10 will be the value now 10 plus 10 that is the result of this operation will now become 20 so let's first print and check it out firstly i will just print the value original value of x which is the 10 and now we will see the updated value the updated value will be 10 plus 10 that is the 20 let's run and check it out whether we are getting correct or not and we are getting output as 10 and 20 10 because our original assignment was 10 and 20 because it is 10 plus 10 equal to x so it is like this 10 plus 10 and this value will assign, get assigned in the x variable instead of writing x equal to x plus 10 we are using a shortcut method that is plus equal to method now similar to this we have different methods too like x minus equal to 10 or x star equal to 10 so all of these have have the same logic like x equal to x minus 10 and here x equal to x multiplied by 10 so this is how assignment operator works in python you can even check the output by printing the value printing the updated value let's run it out so here what happened is firstly the original value was 10 then i used the assignment operator and add added 10 to it so my output got 20 now i use 20 x equal to x minus 10 which becomes x equal to 20 minus 10 that's why we are getting 10 as our output and finally we are multiplying x into 10 so that's why 10 into 10 we are getting 100 as our output so this was how comparison operator works in 
this was how assignment operator works in python we will be moving on to the next operator and that is the logical operators now here again concept of boolean operators takes place what does boolean means boolean means only two inputs either true or false so what happens is whenever we use logical operators the inputs can have a value either true or false any value except that true and false will not work over here so let's take an example firstly i will write x equal to true now i will write y equal to false now notice here i have not used quotes over here i have directly written true and false because these are the reserved keywords whenever i write true with an capital t then this means that x has true value and the python knows that this is the true value you don't need to mention that in the text like our strings here you can directly write true and false without the text so these were the example of boolean in inputs now what happens in the logical operators so logical operators are used to combine this boolean expression inside that we have three different types of logic gates first is the and gate now what happens in the and gate is whenever both of the inputs are true now listen this carefully whenever both of the inputs are true then only the output is true so i will write if both of the inputs are true then output will be true as soon as my any one of the input is false we will get false as our output i will i can write for you guys like whenever both of the values are true i will get true as my output as soon as my value let's say if the first value is false then my output will be false if my value is true and false then also the output will be false if my value is false and false then also output will be false so what happens over here is if both of the inputs are true then only my output will remain true and this is how and gate works in all types of languages so these are the concept of logic gates we are just studied the and gate and gate both of the inputs are true then the output will be true if any one of the input or both of the inputs are false you can directly say that the output will be remain as false so let's check it out by using python so for that i will write print my variable that is x and y so what i will get output for is obviously it will be false because my first variable value is true that is very correct but the second value that is y is false and true and false will not work together as you can see true and false the output will be false so let's run it out and check with what we are getting and we are getting false as our output so this is how and gate works now the next gate we will be learning is the or gate so i will just copy this text over here i will write or now or works differently than and gate inside the or if any one of the value is true then the output will be true so i will just correct the table over here so as you can see like for true true my output is true for true for false true my output is true for true false my output is true but for false false the output becomes false so in the and gate if any one of the input is false output will be false in or gate if any one of the input is true then in the output will be true so let's take the same example that is x now here for the or gate we need to type or and y so x or y will result in true as our output and as i can see firstly we are getting false because x and y has the false that's why it will get false but x or y inside x or y when value is true that's why the output becomes true now the third logic gate will be studying is the not gate now not gate is a single input and single output it just reverses the input so if my x is true then not x will be false if my y is false then the output will be true it just reverses the input true hoga to false ho jayega false hoga to true ho jayega so this is how not gate works so i will simply write print not x and run and as you can see firstly my value of x was true but after running this operation my output becomes false similarly we can do this for y also 
not y means my output of y that is firstly y was set as false so now false will get converted into true so let's run and check it out whether we are getting true or not and yes we are getting true as our output so these were the examples of the logic aids and in total we just studied about the logical operators now the last operator we are studying are the membership operator so in the membership operator we also studied in the last class basically it is used to check whether an element is present in a sequence or not so let's say i have a list over here let's say 1 2 12 3 and just randomly writing over numbers or some numbers over here so this was my list now if i want to check whether a specific element is present in list or not for that i will write print then i will check which will then i will take the element which we need to search whether that is present or not let's take an example of 4.9 so if we want to check whether 4.9 is present in list or not for that first i will write print then 4.9 after that i will write the in operator in stands for usme hai ki nahi basically wo dhoondta hai to usme ye value hai ki nahi that stands for in so 4.9 in and the list name list name is l1 so whenever i run 4.9 in l1 then i will get true as my output because everyone exists in this so i am getting true as my output i will just remove all of the above content for us so there would be no confusion just one second so this was my list and membership operators are used to check whether an element is present inside list or not so 4.9 is present in my list. that's why whenever i will run i will get true as my output so i am getting true now let's take an another example let's say 10 we will check whether 10 is present in list or not now we know that in the list 10 element is not visible which means 10 is not present inside my l1 list that's why i will get output as false only so even in this operator the output is in the boolean format that is true and false as you can see 10 is not present that's why it is returning false as my output and this completes our the operator part now comment please comment yes or no whether you have understood about operators or not quickly comment yes or no if you have got a clear idea about operators or not about the assignment part then after today's class you will get assignment on this an assignment will have question based on today's lecture only so you just need to pay in today's lecture for one hour like it's only 30 minutes left now so after this you will be able to do the uh, assignment assignment will be very simple you don't need to worry about that thing so you can submit the assignment and like assignment submission is compulsory you can solve that assignment very easily now we will move on to the next topic the next topic we will be studied are the conditional statements in python there are if and else statements now these are the statements that we use in our regular basis hindi mein bole to agar magar ki cheeze like if i have 100 rupees then i will buy a silk if i do not have those monies then i will buy a 10 rupees variable so concept of if and else in english is similarly used in our python as well like if amount is greater than 100 then buy a silk else just buy a 10 rupees daily mail so what happens over here is firstly the program checks whether the condition is true or not if the condition is true then it will execute the commands which is located inside the if statements and if the condition is not true then it will not get executed and move to the next block so let's see the syntax first firstly you need to type if then you need to mention the condition like the condition which i mentioned amount greater than 100 then the colon and after colon you will be automatically given an indent now what is an indent an indent is a equal spacing that is used in python now in other languages like c++ or java we have the concept of brackets python does not have brackets python have equal indent the goal of python programming is to show how code how code will look nice so that's why we will be using the concept of indents so all these statements which 
are to be executed inside the if block will have same number of index. So next we will be studying is will be the else part. Now what happens in the else? First it will check if condition this block will then get executed. Now if the condition is not true, like if I do not have amount greater than hundred, then it will go into the else block. Now notice that else do not have any condition. Else will directly execute this block. Now between F, if and else we have an intermediate state that is called as elif. Now what happens over is firstly it will check the condition. If the condition is not true over here, then it will go into elif block. Elif stands for else if. Else if together stands for elif. Elif will again check for the condition. And if the condition is not true, then only it will then move to the else block. So you should remember that first there will be always first that you should use if in between you can use elif and at the end there will be else only. If and elif works same like there will be condition if condition is true it will get executed if condition is not true then it will not get executed. So let's understand this with the example of code. So we we'll go back to our compiler and here I will write a write a code to check whether is whether a number is even or odd. So firstly, I will take a variable. Here I will ask the user to enter a number. Now after the number, I will check for the conditions. Like we know, like I already said, whenever I type percent two. So what happens is this will divide the number by two, but the output of this will be the remainder. So in the case of even numbers, the output will always be zero because even numbers are perfectly divisible by two. So for that, what will condition we will write? We will write first if over here, if number percent two is equal to equal to zero. Now, as I said, the double equal sign is used for the for checking whether value of this operand is equal to this or not. So whenever I type number percent two, it will first calculate the result. The output will be always zero or one only because we are dividing it by two. If the output is true, if the output is zero, then I will just write even number. Else, the other number would always obviously be odd number. That's why there we should not mention any condition in the else block and just simply return the odd number as our output. So let's run and check it out. Here I will enter a number, let's say I enter 10 and I am getting even number as my output. Now let's take a different example, let's take 11. So I am getting odd number as my output. So this is how if else works in the Python. Now let's take another example. Let's take two values, a equal to 5 and b equal to 10. Now the question will be, we need to find the relation between these two variables. So for that, firstly, I will take if a greater than b. So if value of a is greater than b, then it will execute like this. So I will print a is greater than b. Now the second thing we will check whether these two values are equal or not. To check for that, I will use the elif condition. Elif a double equal to B. So whenever my value of A and B will be equal, I will print values are equal. Now the third part will be else. Now here obviously the A is lesser than B. So we'll just print A is lesser than B. Let's run it out. So this was the first example, so I will just enter 10. And here you can see A is lesser than B because the value of A is 5 and B is 10. So what will happen? Firstly, it will check whether 5 is greater than 10. No, it is not. It will go to the elif block. Now, whether 5 and 10 are equal? No, they are not. Now, finally, it will move on to the else block. So this is how conditional statements work in Python. Now, next thing we will be learning are the loops. So loops are the, so in Python, there are scenarios where you will get certain tasks that are repeated again and again. Let's say I ask you to print numbers one to five. Now it will, you will say it is very easy. I will write print one, print two, print three, print four, print five. 
what if i ask you to print numbers up to 20 some of the students might do it some of might do it. might will not do it because 1 2 3 4 5 20 tak aap thak jaoge now what if i ask to print 100 or 200 so now you guys will definitely get frustrated and leave my screen so for that we have the concept of loop a loop statements allows us to execute a group of statements multiple numbers of times so why we use loops because firstly it avoids repetition of the code bar bar likhne ki zarurat nahi padti because we are the programmers we are smart hum log gadha majuri karne nahi baithe yahan pe that's why we will be using concept of loops jahan pe hum log ek logic likhenge and we will get output by just simply by applying to that logic so let's see how this works firstly you should know that there are two, two types of loops in python we will be learning for us with an example so here firstly if i want to print numbers up to 100 then what i will do print 1 then print 2 and we will continue this for up to 100 so instead of that i will skip this step i will just write for now look at this syntax for then i will take a variable let's say i then i need to type in after in i need to type range so what this range will does this range defines an upper and lower limit like if i type 1 to 100 over here then the value of i will start from 1 and it will go on to the 100 so look at the syntax again for variable in range then the colon so here i will write print i so what happen what will happen over here is firstly value of i will be 1 then value of i will be 2 then value of i will be 3 and so on it will go on go on and on and on so now you can see instead of writing hundreds of lines of code we will get output by just writing this so let's run it out and check whether we are getting output or not now as you can see it has completely printed all of the numbers right from the one but look at the output the last number is 99 i was expecting it to be 100 so what happens over here is always the ending limit should be incremented by 1 so instead of 100 i should write 100 plus 1 that is 101 so whenever you are mentioning any type uh, anything inside the range make sure that you increase ending limit by 1 now when i will print 1 to 101 my output will be 1 to 100 just look at the output and the last word was 100 and before that all the numbers started right from the 1 so this is how for loop works in python now for loop is also used to iterate over the different data types now what happens in the iterating task iterating task means yesterday we studied different data types like list tuple strings so we can go into each and every element with the help of for loop for that i will write for i n now i will type the list name first let's define a list over here list 1 equal to 1 2 3 4. i will just randomly write anything over here so this was my list 1 so whenever i will type for i in list 1 now notice i have not used range function over here i have just written i in and the list name that is list 1 so value of i will first become 1 then it will become 2 then it will become 4 then 62 and then finally 5 so it will keep iterating it will keep jumping from one element to another to another to another and it will go on and on till it reaches to the last element so whenever i will click whenever i type print i then all of these values that is 1 2 4 6 2 and 5 will get printed let's run and check it out and as you can see 1 2 4 6 2 2 and 5 i am getting as my output so this is how for loop was in python so remember for loop is always used whenever we know how many times the loop will iterate the next loop we will be studying is the while loop inside a while loop there will be no range here it will be different scenario here while will have a condition as you can see in this syntax while that expression or condition and until that condition is true till then that while loop will start will be executed as soon as the condition becomes false the while loop will get executed so let's check it out with the example i'm coming back to my compiler here i will try take an example of while let's say i want to print 1 to 100 numbers by using the concept of while loop 
So firstly, I will take the upper limit and I will just type number variable and set it as one. Number equal to one. So now I will type while while the condition now number less than now ending limit plus one. So one zero one. Then I will type print number. So what will happen over here is firstly value of number one will get printed, but after this the loop will be executed infinitely. Why this will happen is because we are not changing the value of number variable. The number value of number variable will always remain one, and this loop will go into an infinite stage. Now it might happen that your PC may crash due to this. So this is a very important step to make sure that the condition is properly met or not. So for this, what I will do is I will type number equal to number plus one. So what it will do is firstly the value of number will be one. And it will get printed. Now the number of one will be incre incremented. So one plus one that is two. Again, it will check the condition whether two is less than one zero one. Yes, two is less than one zero one. So it will print, and it will go on, go on, go on, go on till the value of num becomes one zero one. Now one zero one less than one zero one. This does not make any sense. That's why my while loop will get executed. So remember, this is a very important step while writing the while loop. So I will run it out. And as you can see, my numbers are printed from one to hundred. If I don't mention this step, then value one will get printed infinitely. So this condition is always important. So you should not forget to increment or decrement the condition, else there will be a massacre. Now we will see how to write and uh, how to write a table of of a number. Let's take a new variable over here. Let's take number equal to int. Then input, enter a number. So it will ask a user to enter a number. Now I will take a counter over here. So I will write i equal to one because we know table of any number starts with one. That's why I have taken value of i as one. Here I will write while i less than now ending limit plus one. That's why for ten I will write fifteen. So the table will be printed from The actual number into one, and it will go on to actual number into ten. So while the condition i less than eleven, now I will use print. Print. Now I will write over here i. Then I will write star. Then I will write. Okay. Not i. Firstly, I will type the actual number over here. Then star mark, which indicates that this is a multiplication. Then we will type i. So what will happen here is if I enter ten over here, so ten into one will be printed. So what if, uh, every time this will happen. So firstly, if I enter ten, then ten into one will get printed. Now we need to again increment the i value as well. So I will write i equal to i plus one. If we don't write, then ten into one will get printed infinitely. And here comes the main part. I will write equal to comma number into i. So let's run and check it out. It is asking me here to enter a number. I will say let's take five. And we have got the table of five in. Files, files table. I will show again for you guys. Here, what I have done is I have taken a counter that is one because my table starts with one. Then I have taken a condition i less than eleven because my table will go from one into one till the ten, and I will here print number into i, which means the actual number that user has entered into I equal to number into I. So okay. let's run again with a different example. Now let's take the example of let's say ten only. So I'll write ten, enter, and here I have got the ten, the table of ten as my output. So this is how while loop and for loops work in Python. They are used. 
to calculate the uh, they are used to avoid repetition of code and that's where the use the, that's where the loops are used in python and coming to your doubts yes uh, so with you can use infinite elif in your code but but make sure that it makes sense like to, you do not use extra lines of code it should make any sense and about the assignment part yes you will get assignment to based on today's lecture only and now we will be playing a quiz session as i mentioned the quiz will have three winners the third winner will get 1500 rupees discount second winner will get 3000 rupees discount and the first winner will get completely this course the java dsa course for free but before that make sure that you have marked today's attendance firstly on this page you will on the description you will find one link where you can mark your attendance and after that we will be playing a quiz section where you can unlock this course completely for free and tomorrow also we will be playing the quiz where on the same format so uh, if if you guys do not get a chance to be in top 3 today then you might have a chance to be in top 3 tomorrow and with that being said i would like to take a leave from you guys and now i would like to call anam to explain us how quiz works in this boot camp assignment will be uploaded on this page only here you will get an option to see the assignment after this lecture so here you you are getting mark as attendance and now here you are getting view and submit assignment both buttons so you can do this Meanwhile, if you have any more question, then do let me know in the comments. Okay, so this course has duration of three months, and uh, every in the every week we will have nine to ten hours of session. Here, this course will be trained by an expert industry leader, and this uh, the cost of this course is five thousand nine hundred rupees. Yeah, the quiz will start uh, in one one hour minutes. Yes, DSA in Java. Hello, hello, sir. Hello, good evening, guys. Hello, sir. Sir, am I audible? Yes, yes, we're audible. Yeah. So, guys, we'll start with Kahoot. Uh, uh, sir, it's a quiz game. Like, uh, it will there will be uh, questions and options, and you have to mark the right uh, answer. I will share my screen first, then I will explain you everything. So guys, uh, go to kahoot.it website. I will share the website link also in the comment section. Here you have to uh, put the game pin that I will share you. I will share with you the uh, game pin. Yeah. 
so this is the game page put this game page to that website or scan this qr code and uh, make sure that you are entering with your username that you used before your gmail id or your uh, sorry youtube account uh, name do not enter with any other name please and uh, also guys you will be getting only 20 seconds to answer each question and you have you need two device guys please make sure that uh, make uh, make a note that you need to to revise from one which you will be see the question and from the second one you will see the okay and uh, from the second one you have to answer the question you will from the second device you will only get to see the color boxes uh, there will be no question no options only the color boxes on the second device so from the from one device we will see the question on screen on youtube and from the second one you will be answering it and we will be getting only 20 seconds guys i am telling you now that you will, there will there will be the delay of the screen for like for 5 to 10 seconds only so do not uh, uh, spam in the comment section that the it's it's a uh, delaying 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 and all the game pin is 319 Three double zero. I've shared the game pin in the chat box also, or else you can scan this QR code. Uh, use this game pin and enter the game, and all uh, enter with your username only. Will be uh, there will be reward for the top three winners. The first one will get uh, free Java DS, and the second one will get three uh, thousand off, and the third one will be getting uh, rupees fifteen hundred off. So make sure that you're participating and. Uh, 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 giving your best. Also, guys, those those who were will be the winners. Please don't leave without sharing your Gmail ID. Yeah, you can upload the drive link in the assignment uh, section. Guys, go to that one link below. Scroll down the page below the where you mark the attendance. That all uh, below that toggle only. There is an option uh, to view and submit assignment. There you have to share the link. Uh, you can share any link that can be accessible for everyone. Uh, so yeah, 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 guys, you can upload Google Drive link also. If everyone has done entering the game, shall we start? Just tell me in the uh, comment section uh, section that uh, yeah, we can go ahead. Just tell me in the chat box yes or no, guys. Yeah, you can uh, share. Then okay, so we'll start the game now. There are only uh, six questions for now. So guys, make sure that you are answering with minimum seconds. There will be only twenty seconds to answer each question, and you need two devices. From one, you will be seeing the questions, and the, from second one, you will be answering it. From the second device, you will only see the color boxes, nothing else. So this is the first question, which is a correct operator for power x y. There are four options here, and you have to answer the. Correct uh, color box in the uh, on the second device. So four seconds left. The time is up for this one. We'll see the uh, scoreboard at last. The second one. What does the uh, percentage operator do? It's divide of divide. Operator do in Python. Seven seconds, and you have four options again. The time is up for this one. We'll move to the third one. What is the result of the expression for? How do we pronounce this, sir? This is floor division. You can say double slash or double slash p. Acha. Three, two, and one. The time is up for this one. We'll move to fourth one. How do we answer to the questions? I already informed you. Like you have, you need two devices. From one, you will see the questions on the YouTube, and from the second one, uh, first you have to put that game pin and then enter, and 
then answer the correct color box. The time is up for this one also. This is the second last question, the fifth one. What is the output of the following code? There is a code and you have to answer the correct one. The, uh, the time for submission uh, is like you can submit it to, uh, uh, till tomorrow and end of the day. The last one, this will be the last question, guys. Sixth one, what is the output of the following Python code again? The four options, false, true, error, none. The time is up. Now we'll see the podium. Who are the winners? I already told that video will be de uh, uh, delaying like for five to ten seconds. So, so the first, one, second one is Tejaswini, and the third one is Ram. Yeah. Guys, please share your mail. congratulations to these people. And uh, guys, please share your mail, your Gmail ID, use anybody. Like we we'll, uh, use before your at the gmail.com. These guys, please send it fast. Okay, Hashil, please send your username in the chat box. Uh, I will be mailing you people the uh, coupon code uh, by tomorrow end of the day. Before that, before tomorrow end of the day, we'll be receiving your mail. Please, Harshil, Tejaswini, and uh, Ram, please share your username. Guys, I'm waiting. Harshil, Tejaswini, Ram, are you people there? Yeah, Ram, please. Harshil, your uh, username, uh, Gmail ID is not visible in the chat box. Share it again. Harshil, Ram, please send your Gmail uh, username. Do not write at the rate gmail.com. Just write uh, Ram, 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 only Ram Kumar, nothing else, no number, nothing, only Ram Kumar at the rate gmail.com. No, I didn't receive your uh, in, ha, now I received. Okay. Tejaswini. Tejaswini, please. Okay, Ram, got it. Thank you. Thank you, Harshil. Thank you, Ram. Yeah, yeah, Harshil. I got your email ID. Thank you. Tejaswini. Ram Kumar, what is your uh, exact email ID? Please send the correct one. Otherwise, then do. Tejasini, yeah, please share your mail ID. Do not write at the rate gmail.com. Just write your username for your Gmail ID. I have shared where. Please share it again. Tejasini, share it again. Till then, we'll wind up. 
okay so so we'll wind up for today guys we'll see you soon to uh, yes tradition i received your mail id also thank you thank you guys thank you sir so we'll see you again tomorrow at 6:30 bye sir sure sure bye 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 all